Welcome to the Marie Manu Cherry Show, where energy and medicine meet. I will be your host for the next hour. I have over 19 years of healthcare experience and began my career as an energy medicine practitioner while working as an oncology nurse at a Seattle area hospital. My skill in moving energy combined with my medical background have been a catalyst for change in many people's lives. I hope the next hour will be transformative for you as well. Good morning and welcome to the Marie Manu Cherry Show. We are live here in really beautiful, lovely, not too much traffic Seattle this morning. I think everybody kind of decided to sleep in, which is my preference. Lucky. <laughs> or they're getting ready for an, a long weekend because Monday is a holiday. Yeah, which kind of goes against the theory and what I was thinking what? about. You know, Well, I don't believe this is true. Something what? else is, I don't know, because if, if there was a three-day holiday coming yeah. up, most people would get their work day done as quick as they can, especially on a Thursday. Right. Because it ramps up to Friday. Yeah. Unless they're all just going to do it tomorrow. Because typically around here, Thursdays are pretty wacky. Pretty wacky. You yeah. know, like, you know, driving to the studio is a little yeah. bit challenging for me. Um, on You know, it's just yeah. it's a little bit much. But we make it. Yep. But today I even made it early, which was lovely. Yeah, you got to decompress a little bit. I got to decompress and hang out with you in the studio and just kind of relax mm -hmm. and shoot the breeze. And I, you know, I have another theory, though, because... Oh. One of the things I love to do on the show is interview people who I believe are on the mm -hmm. leading edge of thought. It makes me extremely happy. And, and, and of course, you know, you can't just listen to me. <laughs> you, know, you have to listen to other people, too, and get different perceptions and experiences and energy through, you know, the amazingness of individuals who allow their light to shine, which we hope everyone does. Everyone is magnificent. So today I'm interviewing Suzanne Giesman. She's the author of 12 books. The one that we're going to be talking about today is called Messages of Hope. And I bet you anything Suzanne's angels were helping me, you know, navigate through what would typically take about maybe 15 or 20 minutes from my house to get to, a stu to the studio. On a Thursday morning, it can take up to an hour or more, <laughs> you know, even when I'm in the toll lane. <laughs> which can sometimes be 10 bucks, you know, just to get through the toll lane. Um, so Su Suzanne, um, who's residing in South Carolina right now, she was a commander, um, former U.S. Navy commanding officer and aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. She walked the halls of the Pentagon and flew on Air Force One. She did everything by the book, a personal witness to the horrors of 9-11, which is really interestingly documented in this book. She saw things in black and white with little time for spiritual seeking. Never did she sus suspect or expect, she writes, that a personal family tragedy would propel her on a mystical journey that would turn her life's path in a most unexpected direction. Welcome to the show, Suzanne. Oh, thank you, Marie and Benny. Great to be here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we love you. <laughs> hey, if my team can take credit for getting you oh, there yeah. in the morning, I'll take it. <laughs> and so relaxed. I was like, my assistant usually travels with me in the morning so we can take all, you know, like give, even getting on the freeway is just a breeze. But today she's home with her children. Her husband's traveling. So, you know, I was a little bit, okay, I got to get my act together. I got to get in the car at a decent time. And everything was just magical. Um, I just want to say uh, I love, love, love your book. I'm sure I will love all 12 of them. I, I, I spoke to you before we went on the air a little bit because I was just so incredibly touched. And I'm not easily touched. I've interviewed a lot of people. I've read a lot of modern books on self-help, which I love and appreciate and have been, you know, catalysts for many people's lives, of course. But I'm not always, I, I don't always feel it in my heart where there's this, this massive expansion and this knowingness that occurs. And with every word that you wrote, I felt that. And um, so thank you so much. You are amazing. Well, I'm glad I achieved my goal then. I try to write from the heart. And I remember my mother saying to me once, how did you write that? <laughs> she's like, who wrote that? And she never did quite grasp that I was connecting to higher consciousness. She couldn't figure that out. But it's like, Mom, it's a team effort. So uh, well, I, don't, you, I can't take the credit. Well, you do it beautifully. <laughs> and you have an amazing team. And, and you're also funny, which I think is... A little bit of a challenge when you're writing about spirituality. Obviously, writing is definitely one of your amazing gifts. So what made you go into the military? You know, like, wh what oh. happened? Like, is there a wow. family line of, of you know, military activity? <laughs> or, you yeah, know, my, my, my brother's uh, 14 years older than I am, and he joined the Air Force when I was five. 
and to visit him at the bases around the world where he's stationed and to see that lifestyle. I was so drawn to that. And wow. then I became a foreign language major and I thought, ooh, if I join the military and have that, that adventurous lifestyle, I can use my languages firsthand. And that was my goal. And boy, once I set that goal, it was just everything fell into place wow. and my personality matched it because I was very detailed, very wow. organized. I followed orders well. You know, I meet some people who say, I could never go in the military. Don't tell me <laughs> what to do, but not me, boy. You I loved it. Toe the line. <laughs> you loved it. And, and it yeah. served you well. You know, what people don't always understand about life is that our paths are unique and genuine. And there's, there's history, you know, past life history that propels us into certain areas of activity or work or family life that really feed our souls and allow us through that feeding to discover many other things about ourselves. And that's definitely speaking to your experience. So you flow, you've flown, you know, with the president and chief, yeah. chief, I, I'm sorry, I'm not really good at military things. But <laughs> the Joint Chiefs of Staff, yeah. the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, he's the head of the whole United States military. And he yes. asked me, he said, would you be my aide de camp? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to put me in some really cool experiences and it did yeah you've flown around the world you've met prestigious individuals and royalty and presidents and all kinds of people everywhere in profound and amazing ways and have been a part of decision making and you know helping to protect our country which is a very vital role um you you write in your book about 9-11 and you were actually on an aircraft flying to europe um but your flight had to turn around because unfortunately, even the Pentagon, you know, was um, injured, um, if, you, if we can say it that yeah, way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that went up to the cockpit and said to the pilot, take us back to Washington when we had been in radio contact with the Pentagon. And he looked at me and he said, Commander, our flight path is going to take us right over Manhattan. Wow. And by that point, every other aircraft in U.S. airspace, even the president, had been grounded so we were in the last aircraft, flew over Manhattan, and landed in Washington, D.C. It was uh, quite the day. Quite the day is correct. I mean, the way you write about it is so moving and so touching. And in, and to be in that space where you're above all the destruction and being able to view it, you know. And then to walk, to walk step over aircraft pieces in the grass of my office building, the Pentagon, that we had left hours earlier, it was surreal. Well, well, the way you write about it, it's it's a very intuitive process, the way you write about it, and how you don't even want to walk in a certain area, you know, but you were following, you know, the people that you're, are, were hired to, you know, help and to help make decisions within choices. And then luckily you talk about how one of the, the guards, one of the security guards or um, personal guards to the people that you worked with said, okay, let's turn around and go back. And you felt this enormous relief just, oh, yeah. you know, leave your body because it didn't feel good. And then, of course, the death that was present there, you know, um, with the bodies of the people who had died during that horrific tragedy that occurred in our country. Yeah, just, it, just wow, amazing. I see the, the perfection in my path, how it's unfolded, because at that time I had zero spiritual tools to deal with that. My tool was the Navy's way of when you get in a tough situation, what do you do? You suck it up. That's what we did. <laughs> And that's what I did. I thought, I don't well, want to be here. I don't want to be seeing and, this. And thank, what do I do? Thank goodness that is a wonderful thing to learn, you know, because there are times in our life where we have to push everything to the back burner, so to speak, so that we can act in an urgent situation and, and do mm-hmm. what is in the highest good of everyone. So thank goodness that, I think that, is, that is a great skill set to have, especially during a tragedy like that. Um, in the moment, it's perfect. But afterwards, I suffered. Oh. And these days, now there's no suffering no matter what happens. What a switch. Isn't that weird? Yeah. <laughs> so do you think that that, because when I was reading that part of the book, I really felt like, oh, wow, I bet there were so many gateways that opened up around you, you know, areas that diminish the time-space reality from the human experience. And I'm sure guides and angels, probably hundreds of thousands of them were presenting themselves for everyone that was there, you know, but also perhaps shifting your perception and helping you to move into the area of your awakening that you live and work in now. Well, if they were working, they were working in the background. And the problem was I was unaware of them because I was so left brain. Mm -hmm, So I tried traditional uh, religious tools and it didn't work for me. So I just went back to sucking it up. (laughs) (laughs) 
remarkable. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for everything that you've done during your stint um, in the Navy it was, or the Air Force. Excuse me. I don't remember which one. I'm so that bad. Was Navy. Navy. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm just not a military person, but I find it all very, very fascinating. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for everything that you have done um, well, to protect us. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Okay. So you're, you know, walking through the Pentagon, you know, during a, a horrific day in history, hopefully never to happen again um, on anyone's soil, we hope, right? Mm-hmm. That nothing like that happens. Yeah. And, um, you know, something pretty life shattering has occurred for you. And so you're, you're going to churches and it's not working for you. So when did it start to work for huh. you? Well, I retired from the Navy when I had exactly 20 years because of 9-11. I said, hey, Ty, my husband, I said, we have to live our dream while we can. This life is too short. That 9-11 showed me that. And so we sold our house and cars. And the day after I retired, we literally sailed off into the sunset on our sailboat. Lived aboard for several years, sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Life was idyllic. You guys are and like gypsies almost. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, like, you know, you get that way with the Navy lifestyle. You get used true. to being stationed here and there and moving all the time. And, it, and adventure is part of the life. So, yeah. So life was good. And then, like you said, you know, we have certain lessons to learn. And I kind of ran away from life after Mm -hmm. 9-11. Really, Mm -hmm. if I'm honest, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with this anymore. So sailed away, and then life caught up with us. Uh, I I can make this very brief because I want to get to the... The The juice. The the good, (laughs) the the upside of all of this. But unfortunately, it caught up to us. I I ran away from 9-11, but then uh, my stepdaughter, Ty's daughter, Susan, who was a sergeant in the Marines, was struck and killed by lightning. Oh my goodness. On gracious. duty. Wow. And uh then you can't run away from that. Wow. And you can't and you could suck it up but only so much, you know, and I was miserable for about a year and I just <laughs> as I tried to find answers. But happily my deep seeking took me to private practice of sitting in the silence. And what would I find I found the answers there. And becoming uh-huh. a medium. And, you know, I think it's, again, so interesting, another military person in the family who doesn't die in combat. I mean, not s- specifically, you know, from a bullet, yeah. but from lightning. I mean, that's just got yeah. to be so weird. That must have just shooken up your life like crazy. Oh, it did. But since then, the stories of, of I mean, I have another book called Wolf's Message about a young man who was struck and killed by lightning. And his his messages have become the foundation of my work, which I call the awakened way. So this mm-hmm. whole lightning, the transpersonal wow. transformation from a bolt out of the blue really is an analogy for all of us because so many of us need a wake up call, unfortunately. Right. No, I agree. You know, to, you know, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, so I love how you're able to, you know, put it into the perspective of, of the metaphors. And of course, now that you've been talking to dead people for quite a while, um, which of course I'm sure brought you all the, the, the piece that you needed regarding your stepdaughter. Um, you, you know, Marie, I'm yeah. not sure until about a minute ago that you even told the listeners that I am a medium. So I really? think there might be some of them right now that are going to say what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, our commercials probably said that um, because we have all these oh, intro okay. commercials. But yeah, you're a medium, <laughs> of course. Yes, yes, of course. Um, yes, so a, a wonderful medium. You're probably right because I just read that one paragraph in the in the bio in the back of your book. So yes, you are a medium, you know, and, and it's so interesting and so bizarre to come from any wake of life, but of course yours very more traditional perhaps in, in the way that some people look at life. Um, but to have the, that one death in such an extraordinary way, because really when you have family members that work in the military, death is kind of an expected outcome or a huge possibility, even though death happens all the time, constantly, but when you work in life and death situations, you know, yeah. where you're putting yourself at risk physically, that 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 is so surprising when it occurred for you, of course, in a way that n- neither you nor your husband expected. And by the way, and I, I can, of course, I'm going to let you speak. Um, <laughs> I love your husband. I, I oh. Of course, I don't know him, but I yeah. love him. The way you Everybody talk about. Everybody who meets him does. They can't have him. He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the two of you were destined to be together in more ways than we could possibly imagine. And he's been yeah. such a great supporter of yours and just yeah. loved you all along the way that you made this huge shift in consciousness. So, yes, we're so sorry for the loss of your 
your beautiful daughter, your, your stepdaughter, well, but thank Ava you. is her daughter. We are a team in this, and yeah. we know that it's our, we honor Susan by this work and help so many other people as a result of her passing, which is what we tell people who have uh, suffered the death of a loved one all the time. First of all, number one message is they are still right here. But the second message is instead of asking why, ask what can I do to bring more light into this world as a result of their light that they brought here. Oh, that's a beautiful way to say it. So in your book, you talk about sailing with your hubby. You guys are like you've escaped 9-11, you know, and you're sailing and you started to do automatic writing. So you somehow had started to reach out to the spiritualist idea of life. And this was after Susan passed. Though. Ah. That was the catalyst. Yeah. And I had not done any of this before that, but it was when she died and I saw her body, her, her lifeless body that I knew that you can't kill the spirit. And I knew I had to find a way to tap into that and it was through that daily practice of sitting in the silence hoping to connect to Susan wow. that I began to get this inspired <laughs> writing and the poetry that's in the book so oh, yeah. that was the big catalyst there and, and the funny thing about the story too is that you you know poetry is not your thing you know it doesn't oh, like no. <laughs> excite you you don't write in a poetry fashion you know as a poet it's just not, it's nothing that you even gravitated towards. And, and this is what I love about spirit, because spirit knows us so well and also knows that, you know, that we don't always believe in the magic beyond um, the physical realm. You know, we, we, and we need proof and evidence. And it will yeah. bend over backwards if you allow it the opportunity to do so, to show you, you are a magical and, and, being. And that's, that's what changed my life is the evidence, because of my background, and, and so that's why every time I work with the spirit world, they always drop in some verifiable information that I wouldn't know because they know me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you you write about in the book, you know, that you would excuse yourself from your hubby, go find some quiet place on the on the boat, and close your eyes, which I find I, I've automatically written for probably. 30 years. It's definitely something that feeds my soul. But I do with my eyes wide open. I definitely do not close my eyes. <laughs> and and all this beautiful poetry would just pour through you. Well, the, 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 the eyes closed skill is very uh, valuable when I get downloads in the middle of the night and I don't want to disturb poor Ty. <laughs> 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 I just keep that pad of paper there. Scribble, 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 scribble. Okay, know, I'm gonna, I don't have anyone to disturb at the moment um, sharing the bed with me other than my cats, but I still turn on the light. So I'm going to try it next time when I'm awakened in the middle <laughs> of the night and see if anything legible can occur. Um, so, so, you, so you automatic write often then. This is something that you've... you've oh, done. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ty has learned. He'll hear me scratching on the paper over there and turning the pages. He's learned not to say a word. And then sometimes <laughs> we get visitors, and I often tell people that our bed gets a little crowded these days. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. So, and then you share, you know, a lot of your writings with your husband, and it moves him, too. You know, it, it, oh, I think yeah. he's been this great validator for you just by watching his facial expressions and his own tears that emerge from his eyes that he's so equally touched by this incredible life that you have now. Well, you know, I got to tell you two different things. If you want to see, you have to, everybody got to experience this guy. If you go to YouTube, Suzanne Giesman Messages of Hope, there's a documentary that we actually, we were filmed so you can see us interacting. But there's also one on my website called What Does Love Look Like on the mm. video page. And it's this beautiful hour long video of why our relationship works, like this primer in how to how to keep your love going. It's just so, I just love them to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a mutual love fest over there and whatever bungalow yeah, yeah, the yeah. two of you are creating, you know, it's quite <laughs> amazing. So, you know, you have this passing of this beautiful child that, you know, a loss in the family that's obviously moving for everyone just in normal circumstances, but in abnormal circumstances for you. And, mm -hmm. and you start seeking out spiritual teachers, I'm assuming, right? That's what happened for you? I didn't look for spiritual teachers. I, I looked for a medium because I, most people think I'd been seeing spirits my whole life. I was intuitive <laughs> and psychic. Not at all. It was completely squashed down, never, never rose its head early in my life. <laughs> 
until I began sitting in the silence and it awakened this this intuitive knowing. And But I still had no idea one day I would be a medium. All I knew is we needed to find out if Susan was still here. So I dragged Ty to a medium only to find out years later, <laughs> Marie, that he didn't even know what a medium was. <laughs> He's such a good husband. He just said, Yes, dear. <laughs> and Aww. now he's married to one. Aww. But it, it was that medium that changed our lives because she brought Susan through without a doubt. And we were not gullible. We were right. highly skeptical. And she didn't have our last name. And the proof that I give in the book that it was Susan just left us in tears, both right. of us. And I think that's what, yeah. I'm sure that's what's escalated your career and your ability to teach and write and share information is that you're able to tap into, uh, you know, the, the nuances of what the spirit has to say, because, yeah. because you don't know the spirit, the person is gone. You don't know their family or friends for the most part. Right. right? right. And, and individuals right. have just found you by word of mouth, which is of course the best way to build a business, I think. And, 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 and you've tapped into things that, there's no way you would know it and you share it and everybody laughs and cries and it's really an incredible experience, right? Yeah, and just, just to give a quick example yeah. of the evidence, my latest reading that I did just last weekend uh, was this gentleman, he's sitting with me and his wife had passed and she came through and showed me immediately how she passed, what her personality was like, and then the nuances. I said, she's showing me you have this pair of boots and that you would wear it so often you literally wore holes through the <laughs> soul, yet you wouldn't give them up, and they be it became this private joke between the two of you. When are you going to get rid of those boat boots? And and he just laughed and cried and, I mean, struck a home run just with that one little detail out of many in that session that just, these are the kind of things that, that change lives like that medium changed right. our lives. Right. That's I, the joy of this. I think people like yourself who really know how to feel the love in, in between families, and and you've had you've had so much love in your own family, and still do, of course. That that's what allows you to pick up on those nuances that mm -hmm. maybe an, another person would not even they would just throw it out of their mind or or wouldn't even be able to connect to it. I think love is obviously the most powerful energy there is that exists that's, on the world. That's right? it. That's it. I, I try not to just pigeonhole myself as a medium. I, my, my goal is to teach people that that love is our very essence and right. love is the highest vibration. When we tap into that, then our, our lives fall into place. Oh, yeah. Just absolutely beautiful. So what's one of your favorite stories? If you were to share a story here uh, on the show to the thousands of people who are listening right now. Um, what, oh, my gosh. Do you have a favorite? It, it, or Yeah, I don't have a favorite. I have so many, but I just tune in right there on the moment. And I even did a video of this one about a reading for a woman who wanted to hear from the love of her life. Instead, I tap into her uncle who <laughs> gives me his name and the name of his kids. There was so glad I was talking to him. It showed me that he had, you know, all these things about his life. And she says, yeah, but he hasn't died. He's in hospice. He's getting ready to die. Right. And and it was verifiable evidence this was him. And he gave me a story about somebody shooting a rattlesnake to <laughs> prove that it was him. And then a big important message at the end of that session that we had. Well, she found out later there was only one living soul who knew that story of a rattlesnake. So what a perfect piece of evidence to show this was definitely her uncle's soul that I was communicating with from hospice. He wasn't even gone yet from his physical body. And the message he came to share with her and the family was, I may look like my body is suffering here in hospice, right. but I'm not I'm not suffering at all. I'm the same crack and joke guy, you know. <laughs> I'm not ready to be pushing up daisies yet. And I mean, he was joking. He was laughing. Meanwhile, his wife was sitting at his side, and he's having difficulty breathing, unconscious on his final breath. Yet he's having this conversation yeah. with me, telling me this story that only one of the soul in this world knew. A really funny story about shooting a rattlesnake. <laughs> it is just stunning with this important message for all of us, anybody who's ever sat with a loved one and, and they think that they're suffering, they're but not. the soul is yeah. always fine. You know, I think some, you know, the, the human realm is so physical. And so the body's having reactions as our energy is moving out, you know, it's, yes. it, it might be moaning or crying or something of that nature, but that doesn't at all mean that the, the being is suffering at all. 
you, you know, before I um, knew I was an intuitive at all or did any sort of energy work or medium work, I was actually in a hospital. I was actually in a, a skilled area of a, of a facility, and one of my patients was actively dying. And I thought I had missed her last breath, and I had a rule that I wouldn't go, th- that no one would die alone. And so I, I was mad at myself, and I thought she had passed, and I walked over to her bed, and I sat on the edge of her bed to listen to her breast sounds and got my stethoscope out, and she woke up. And she'd been in a coma for weeks and just on wow. hospice care. And um, she woke up, and she looked me straight in the eye, and she gave me a huge hug, and she goes, Honey, I love you. She kissed me. She told me that she was with her family, her husband, her mother, oh, you know, and that, that she was having a wonderful time, but she'd been moaning for weeks, and her son was totally upset, and we couldn't give her any more morphine, or we were going to literally kill her. And uh, it was just a, a really great moment where maybe we shouldn't pay so much attention to the, the body and we should look towards what's really happening to the spirit. So what an incredible story for you and that family to be able to know that he's okay and he's having yeah. fun and he did everything he could to connect with you, actually, yeah. <laughs> so that he could let his fa- he obviously loves his family so much that he wanted them yeah. to know that he was having a great time. Yep. So, so what would your message be to people listening to the show today about? Oh, oh. yeah. Easy. It's easy. <laughs> it's, 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 I've encapsulated it in this uh, awakened way teaching. And it's basic, very basic. You are a beautiful soul here and now. We walk in two worlds at once, this physical world and the world that our soul always knows. And we can access that at any time because we're part of this big web of interconnection. And what joins the two worlds, every world, is that energy of love. And you find your way back to that space through the heart. Oh, That's it. Well, you know, um, I can't even believe that we're, like, almost done with the, the, this part of the show. I mean, the, the time has gone so incredibly fast. Mm-hmm. And I honestly don't even think I've done you justice interviewing you today. You are truly a gift and extremely special and amazing. It, for those of you who don't know Susan very well or who do, um, Susan Giesman is the author of 12 books. Um, the one I'm holding in my hand is Messages of Hope, the Metaphysical Memoir of a Most Unexpected Medium. And, of course, she had a very long 20-year career in the U.S. Navy and flew on you know, Air Force One and has met with presidents and royalty around the world and, and worked very tirelessly to protect our nation. Um, I just can't thank you enough for everything you've done historically and everything you're doing now for the human race. I just, I love you. And I, I we haven't met yet. <laughs> I love in, you, Marie. In person, we, we, just, when, when we do, watch out. They, they, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll blow the roof off whatever building we're in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are adorable. And I just love, love, love you. I think you're a wonderful soul. So I hope everyone looks you up. What's the best way for someone to get a hold of you? Theawakenedway.org. Great, theawakenedway.org, yeah. and I hope everyone orders this book and all your other incredible books and is, is easily touched um, with your messages because they are profound. Thank you so much. Now I'm all high. going to have to come down again. <laughs> or why? why yeah, have a beautiful day and say hi to your hubby. And yeah, we know you. he's right yours. We, no one will work on stealing him. Um, okay. have, have a lovely day, and thank you so much, Suzanne. You too. Thank you. We're gonna bye-bye. T- bye-bye. We're going to take a break here on the Marie Menu Cherry Show, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Marie Menu Cherry, and I'm really excited to announce my second online course beginning February 2019. This course is called the Advanced Chakra Experience. In this three-part online course, I will share my vast wisdom of the chakra system and how it relates to energy medicine. With this knowledge, you will easily hear, see, or feel the vibration of these powerful energy centers, allowing one to heal themselves or others. Each one of the organs has its own unique frequency, vibration, 
Like the gallbladder, for instance, one of the things that slows down the gallbladder energy is frustration. So when we think about healing the gallbladder, as an example of one of the organs we'll be talking about during this lovely three-part online course, we're going to talk about the vibration that is the healthiest for the gallbladder, like joy, fun, relaxation. We're going to talk about how to hold those frequencies and how you can send it directly to your gallbladder. For more information, go to energyintuitive.com. It took me a long time to be able to say Chandler has cancer because that is such a scary word. St. Jude takes care of absolutely everything. And knowing that we don't have to pay for all of the medical expenses, that's huge. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. St. Jude is uniquely positioned to advance the cures of pediatric cancer, I think better than any other institution in the world. The contributions make a big difference. Donors are important to us because you get the feeling that you have a team behind you. We have the resources and we have the focus. And so if St. Jude doesn't do it, who will? St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. The Marie Manu Cherry Show is streamed live over the internet. So if you have friends or family members living outside of the Seattle area wanting answers to life's questions, encourage them to listen to the show and to call into the show to talk with Marie. If you are interested in receiving guidance on an issue in your life, call Marie locally at 425-373-5527 or toll free at 1-877-825-8828 for her insight into your situation. Get inspired every hour right here on Alternative Talk 1150. And welcome back to Marie Manu Cherry Show. We're live here in Seattle, and we just finished interviewing Suzanne Giesman. She was amazing. Um, her book, Messages of Hope, um, truly has touched my heart. And I might be reading this book, not might, but multiple times, because it's just really stunning. Uh, so who do we have on the phone lines? We've got people waiting, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Very patiently, they in. have been. Yep, 877-825-8828 is the number for the Marie Manu Cherry Show, and we'll jump right to it. We'll take Kelly calling in from Oregon. Hi, Kelly. Welcome to the show. Hi. Oh, thank you. So excited to talk to you, Marie. Oh, wonderful, Kelly. What can I do for you? Well, um, I am just like in a pivoting moment. Like, I really want to change careers and just need, I'm just thinking of different directions to go Uh and just wanting more, honestly, of an adventurous lifestyle. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And (laughs) so kind of just wanted to feed my soul, basically, in my career. And I just don't feel like I'm doing that right now. Great. I, I think that's really great to have that awareness and that awakening. You know, we're right in the middle, smack, well, actually more, even more so towards the, we have an eclipse happening on Monday, Monday, t- Tuesday-ish, major eclipse, full moon, blood, red, wolf, whatever it is. It's like very, 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 very intense, this moon. And it's we've been sandwiched in between eclipses. We had one on January 5th, and now we're going to have this one Monday, Tuesday-ish. Um, depending where you are in the world. And it's going to force you to change. It's going to help you to let go. It's going to help you to move forward. Eclipses are powerful, powerful um, wild cards in astrology. They really make things shift. But here's what I heard as soon as I went live with you. You know, because you're you're a practical person. Would you agree? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a good quality. I mean, we look at someone like Suzanne who, um, you know, Worked in the military, for goodness sakes. Obviously, practical person. I worked in nursing. Very practical career. Loved it. So it's good while we're in the physical realm to have that ability to work in the practical world. But at the same time, we have to allow ourselves to open up to the non-physical. So what happens for you is you keep, you're, you're communicating to the universe. You're like pleading with them a little bit, which is fine. But the words that you're using are words that they cannot see and do not understand. Like who, where, when. Why? How? The, the, the universe does not have these words in its vocabulary. These are very limited words. They're usually words used in desperation or fear or doubt. Um, 
the universe doesn't operate that way or think that way. It, it, so you have to eradicate these words from your seeking, if you will, and and use words more more like uh, more places of gratitude, like thank you so much for lighting my path, as if it's already happened. So when it comes to manifesting, changing anything in your life, your vibration needs to be in a frequency that it's already happened. And and yes, you are not going to know when, where, who, why, or how. The universe wants you to move those off your plate and actually start aligning to the divine. Does this make sense? What I'm talking about? Absolutely. Okay, so every that's time that's what I've been doing. Pardon? That's what you've been doing. That's what, yeah. Is moving those yeah. words from your plate. Okay. I mean, that's what you have been doing, or that's what you need to be doing. Oh, that's what I need to do. Yeah. Everything that you said, who, what, when, where, right? Is what I've been doing. So, so every time you say, to, you know, to the universe, when is this going to happen? The universe is like, what is she talking about? We don't know what oh. she's talking about. Like, so it's already happened. Right, right. It's already yeah. happened. It already exists in the universe. So it, maybe one of the things you can start saying to yourself is, what if I'm learning to know what is in my highest good in every area of my life? Because what, what happens is when we get into the knowing spa- space, which is a f- place of confidence, we get into this place of confidence where we, and, and there doesn't have to be any evidence that actually gets us to that place, which is very hard for humans to understand, by the way. It's a very hard concept for humans to get. But once you get into the, this feeling of knowing, which can come from moments of feeling the divine or sparks of energy, and just like when I was reading Suzanne's book last night and this morning, and um, and I'll be reading it also in the future, I just had, I was just filled with so much joy and love and happiness. That tells me that I'm on my path, that I'm doing correct things, because there's other thoughts that would come into my mind that are related to me personally. So when you're in this knowing place, in this knowing, that's when you actually will get inspired and your path will be lit for you. It's really hard to have a path lit for anyone, whether it's about career or health or love or anything else that we're wanting to create in our life when we're in these other words that the universe doesn't even have in its vocabulary. That's amazing. Question then, is that why a lovely relationship has come my way? Hmm. And I feel like before that I did exactly what you were saying. And, and so did you stop doing that and then the relationship came? Yes. Yes, exactly. So, so absolutely. I need to do the same. With everything in your life. And I, I love what, that you said this, Kelly, because we usually have an area of our life where we don't fret about it or we stop fretting about it and we release it and then it happens for us. And I think if we can remind ourselves of those moments over and over and over again, then we'll we'll more quickly get out of this who, what, where, when, or why thing, you know, and move into the knowing space, that that beautiful consciousness where everything exists. So, and congratulations on your partnership. I'm very happy for you. Yeah, this would have felt like. It felt like a knowing before I met him. Yeah, um, exactly. So uh, that's what I want you to do with work. I will tell you your work, work will have a lot to do with intuition. When I drew out your chakra system, there was one chakra that I really focused on, and it was your third eye. So it's your work will be metaphysical in some way. It will definitely be spiritual in nature, and it's something that you have a great love for. So why wouldn't your work be that in some capacity? And teaching. Sure, why not? Go like, for it. Yeah, yeah have fun. Yeah. So step into the knowing. You know how to do it. So have fun. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thanks, Kelly, for joining us. 877-825-8828 is the number. We'll travel to Lake Oswego. We have Jamie joining us. Hi, Jamie. Hello. How Hi, are you? Jamie. How are you? Good. How are you? I am great. Thank you. What can I do for you? Well, I just, I, I called you a year ago and, um, was it helpful? <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Good. Yes, I'm so very glad. I'm so yes. glad. And thank you for calling back. And so a yes. year later, you know, uh, now what can we do for you? Well, I just, I, so the big change is here. Like you told me it was going to be, and mm-hmm. I, I'm excited about it, mm-hmm. but Obviously, the fears are here with um, some pieces of it. And so I'm just kind of wondering what you, um, and I kind of listened to what you were saying earlier um, with with the caller beforehand, and some of that kind of resonated with me. So I don't know. What what is your feeling? Well, the fear really is front and center when I draw out your energy, which I'm just going to lift up. We have, you know, cameras here in the studio. That's why I try to put on lipstick before I get in here. Um, (laughs) So um, for those of you who are watching on on the video, I think it's through YouTube, 
um, or through the station or whatnot, the your root chakra is extremely large, like super, super, super gigantic, huge. And um, it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to end right around above the knees. So when I look at uh-huh. chakras, you know, they look like cones to me when I step into them. And the tip of the first chakra, which is the root chakra, is in the pelvic floor. And then it extends to right above the knees approximately. Yours extends about 20 feet into the ground beneath oh you. Right. But that's okay. That's just good information that you're even more afraid uh-huh. than you think you are. Mm-hmm. And so I think it would be really great to start to tell yourself because I believe in self-nurturing. I believe in self-appreciation. I think it leads us to self-mastery, actually. And, and so okay. if you can just start saying to yourself, honey, what if we're safe? What if everything's okay? What if we're on the right track? What if everything is working out for us? What if, what if only good comes from this? I want you to start having this internal dialogue with yourself throughout the day so we can get this vortex back to a, a, a healthier size because then you're going to be able to hear your higher self, hear wisdom, hear guides or be directed mm-hmm. in whatever direction you would love to go in. But we need to shrink this down so that you're not um, in that kind of that fight or flight response. Even though listening to your voice, that's not how most people would know that from you. Mm-hmm. I tend to be like right. that too. You know, like when I'm having weird stuff happen in my life and I'm freaking out, only the people closest to me would know that. Everybody else would right. think I'm perfectly fine. I got a smile on my face, yeah. you know. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yes. So let's work on this nurturing internal dialogue for you. Okay. 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 Awesome. And good luck. Congratulations. And then as far as my work goes, my mm-hmm. future work, that's, that's going to, there's going to be a similarity, but a shift. Oh yeah. Is that, do you see that? Oh, of course. I, I think you can have whatever you want. I think you've let go of okay. something extremely um, debilitating in your life that was very challenging for you. And mm-hmm. and now you're allowing a free flow of energy into your life, which can be utilized in any way you wish it to be. Okay. Okay? Awesome. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have you a so great day. Morning. You're welcome. Thanks, Jamie, for joining us. 877-825-8828. We'll take uh, Allie now calling in from the Maryland area. So, Allie, welcome to the show. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Oh, my gosh. Hi, <laughs> it's you. Allie. Yes. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I'm lovely. Thank you. What can I do for you? Um, so I also wanted to ask about my career. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm like the first caller. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in construction management oh, um, nice. and not what <laughs> I love. Right. I'm really good at it. Yeah, but, great. And whatever I'm, I want to I'm do really next. good at putting in IVs. In fact, I try to get, right. you know, if, if only I had some catheters in the house, I would practice on willing participants because it was so fun and I miss it. <laughs> Um, but I can't get anybody to let me do it as they shouldn't. I haven't done it in 20 years. They should not let me practice on their veins. But so I understand what you're saying. You know, you're really good at something. You know, you, you excel mm-hmm. at it. Obviously, Suzanne Giesman is an, a clear, you know, representation of that. She rose to the highest ranks in her military career. You know, she's obviously very yeah. good at it. But just because you're good at something doesn't mean that that's what you're supposed to be doing. It, right. Right. So you've got that down, right? You've got that clear. Yeah. So, and I've tried to be patient. But <laughs> well, I'm thank just like, you. I appreciate that. Here's what they're telling me. Um, and then I'm going to go back to what I wanted to tell you, but I'm being interrupted by your guides, which is good. That's their job. <laughs> their job is to go, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, is that you needed this time because your consciousness wasn't ready for you to move forward. So sometimes people get very frustrated. I certainly, I'm, 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 I have a lot of fire in my chart. I'm not a patient person. I'm, I'm more so now that I'm in my fifties, but patience is not a part of my, I'm like, what do you mean? Why does that happen yet? What's going on? You right. know? So you've had some conscious development that needed to occur for it to allow you to move into your next phase of your life. And you're someone who also likes to move quick in the world and consciousness is not it can happen in an instant, but it's usually a slow unraveling, you know? Mm-hmm. There there are things in my own life that I waited decades to have the answer to. And and I and I'm someone who will read spirituality. I'll meditate. I'll go talk to people. You know, I'm not I don't sit in my laurels and either do you. And yet, mm-hmm. despite all of that desire to move very quickly in my life, eh, still it can be years and years before I go, oh my gosh. And, but my consciousness wasn't ready for it. Your consciousness is now ready. So things are going to start to move forward. So do your very best to, to stay engaged where you are because your consciousness is now going ding, 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 ding. 
And and the part okay. that so that's what your guides wanted me to tell you, including the ding <laughs> ding for some reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the part that I wanted to tell you is follow the joy, even if the joy seems silly, a waste of your time, unnecessary, because that's where the yellow brick road is, is in the joy. Yeah. I'm not kidding. The other night, because the, these eclipses are so powerful right now that being quiet is really important because you can hear, see, and feel in the quiet a whole lot more during eclipse time because eclipses bring light into the darkness. And I was staring at my cat. I've been just staring at my cats lately, you know, do my best not to listen to anything in the <laughs> background and just staring at their stripes and their whiskers and the subtle colors of their fur and their eyes. Of course, they're loving every second of it. But I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing? This is like a complete waste of my time. But yet it is really, really magical. And I've been getting great information as I'm just staring at the fur of these cozy creatures that have been my company for almost 10 years so right. okay you got it now okay i can do that <laughs> okay have a lovely time in maryland All right. thank you so and your, much. your guides are just blowing you kisses they're very proud of you all right thank you you're welcome <laughs> thanks Allie, for joining us uh let's take uh now tina calling in from corvallis oregon hi tina welcome to the show hi hi tina how are you i'm good how are you i'm Ready? lovely what can i do for you um i I spoke to you about a week ago um, and on FaceTime, but oh, okay. and I'm doing great. And I, I just oh, so want, we had a I session. Call, we had a yes. session, right? Okay. And you know, I don't remember. So thank you so much for cluing me in. I truly appreciate it. Yes. Okay. That's okay. I, I didn't mean to call today. I didn't, you know, uh, intend to call. I've been rolling right along with everything we talked about. So good. But um, there was an incident yesterday at the school with my son mm -hmm. and, um, I just wanted to see if you could maybe look at him and, and tell me what you think and maybe um, give me some insight there. Well, he's a little fiery right now. You know this, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he's creating some, a little bit of, mm, what's the word I want to use? Uh, how would you describe it, Benny, when your boys are fiery? Because Benny's got twins and they have their fiery <laughs> moments, right? Yeah. A little I, distraction? I, I guess putting lightly I mean, <laughs> really i mean sure yeah. we'll go with that right yeah, yeah. so you know so benny can relate my, yep. luckily i've had a decade now since my kids have really been you know in that space i have a, a super fiery uh, child so and the eclipses are really intense right now so someone like your son is going to feel it a thousand times more than the average person do you give your kids mental health days I do. I do. I, I, I used to feel a little bad about it, but no. I don't feel bad about it. Because no. I have some other girlfriends who are like, nope, we go every day. No. Everybody and needs I, mental I health days. Right. Yeah, so, I do do that for him. And um, it's just, just about once a year he ends up in the principal's office. Yeah, well, that's not too bad. Year, it gets a little worse. A no, little it's worse. not bad at all because he's straight A. Yeah, like, he's a love. Like, people like him. You know, he's really popular. He's he is. Really picky about but he's him. also he feisty. Likes, he's, feisty. He's, feisty. he's feisty. You know? Yeah. But he, he, had, he let out a comment yesterday that, you know, they wanted to take seriously. Oh. And, um, and so, yeah, and, it, and it's just not like him. I mean, it's like him to well, hold it in until he right. blows his staff. Right. So but I think he might were awful and and so you know he will, like well i can kind of relate i was going through security check in oklahoma actually thank goodness i was in oklahoma and my bags got flagged even though i was what tsa pre-check you know so they were going through all my stuff and 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 the woman said do you have anything sharp in here that would hurt me and i go no i don't even own a gun i thought oh i probably shouldn't even say oh. that word right now yeah. <laughs> you know right. but i was in right. oklahoma where everybody owns a gun even my daughter had to buy a gun because they get rattlesnakes sometimes in their backyard and they have oh. dogs right and their <laughs> dogs will chase the rattlesnakes i don't know who's going to use the gun or if anybody ever will but now they got this like 500 pound safe that movers had to move, you know, to keep their oh gun, God. you know, because we're not gun people, you know, or at least we right. weren't. We aren't either. Right. So, That's why so I didn't take his comment. Right. It because, isn't. You know, it was just like me, an innocent thing. Luckily, I was in Oklahoma and the woman didn't even take a second look at me because as I'm walking away, I'm like, that was like dumb. You don't say that when you're a yeah. security check and they're digging through your bags. So, so yeah, have like things not to say. Right. So I would sit down with him and have a chat because he, he does get fiery and he does need mental health days. And maybe you need to give him a few more 
you know, throughout the year or even ask your guides, hey, could you clue me in if I need to respond sooner? So Because he's already an A student. So you don't have to worry. It's not going to hurt his grades, right? So that yeah, he can have yeah. a mental health day. But, yeah, I would sit down and go, these are the words you can't use when you're getting fiery. You, you've yeah. got, you can substitute him perhaps. And he's, he's so smart and he has so much integrity. You know, just like when I said, yeah, I don't have a gun in here. Him that everybody right. thinks poorly of him now. You know? No, they don't. <laughs> don't he worry about so. it. No, yeah, they yeah. don't. And it's good for him to sometimes feel that he's human. It's fine. It's perfectly yeah. fine. And just, okay. I would recommend when he says that to act the way I did, kind of blow it off and don't make it a big deal so that he doesn't make it a big deal. Because if he can roll it off and be a little silly about it, everybody else around him will too. Okay. Okay, that's a good point because we were, we were thinking. Well, maybe we should like just have him talk to a counselor a few times because well, he does Well, there's nothing do wrong with that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Back, and he needs a constructive way. It's and you know it's kind of like getting a little worse every year. And the older he gets, the yeah. more serious they take. Right. Things, well, because right? you just get bigger and stronger, and we have a right. louder voice, and it's deeper. So yeah, I, I'm not against counseling as long as you get someone who's really good. That means super kind. Aware of energy and conscious. Okay? Okay, yeah. Okay. okay thank All right, you. You're welcome. Have a beautiful day. Yeah, thanks for joining us, and good luck with uh, the little little child there, little son. I know I've got to deal with it, too. It's one of those things. I know. Take my time. There's a lot of breathing, that's for sure. A lot of deep breaths, a right? A lot of deep breaths. <laughs> so we'll uh, wrap, out, uh, wrap up the hour with uh, Ellen. She's calling in from Miami. Hi, Ellen. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you uh -huh. great. Hi, Ellen. How's Miami? Okay. Um, it's warm. It's beautiful, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, maybe we all need to get on a plane. It misses us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the perfect time of the year. I know. It's so funny because actually we're having a mild winter. I had to even mow my yard last weekend. I'm going to mow the backyard this weekend. And primroses are popping up. My magnolia tree in the back is going to bloom any second. Like, it's just busting. But I was talking to my kids. I'm like, we really need to plan next year's kind of warm weather, fallish winter holiday now. <laughs> because I think next mm -hmm. year we're going to have a nice winter. I don't think we're going to go to Miami. But, um, hey, you never know. So what can I do for you? You never know. Right. So I'm calling uh, about my kids. Yeah. Or my, my left hip yep. in particular. Yeah. Um, it's been an, an ongoing issue since my 20s, uh -huh. and I'm now in my 50s, so uh -huh. it's been 30 some years. Right. And it's kind of baffling because I've gone to. It's many not baffling therapists. at all. This is not baffling. Okay. So, so hips are about moving forward in one's life. The left right. hand side of the body, so the entire left hand side of the body is feminine in its energy yeah. frequency, and it's about mm -hmm. receiving. Mm -hmm. You are not good at receiving. You're very strong. Yeah. You're super independent. You can do true. pretty much anything on your own. And you will try That's at least, even if you, That's true. you know, like you should look at some of my grouting because I've never taken the class. I'm not good at it, but I'm not patient. And uh, <laughs> I've regrouted a few things in my house. It doesn't look great, but it's not cracking. So I'm like, okay, this is good until I get a, you know, until I get enough things on my honey-do list and I'll have, you know, a project guy come in and fix a few things for me. So that's what mm -hmm. you're like. You're like me in that regard, right? Yeah, you know, I can fix a nail pop. I can, yeah, weatherize my door, you know, um, and I don't like to ask for help because it just takes mm -hmm. too much time and whatever, you know. Uh, and then I feel mm -hmm. like I owe people things and then I have to go do stuff for them and I don't really have time to do stuff for other people. I already do that professionally. But right. you have have to start receiving you have to you can know this is what's hurting your hip and we don't want you to get some something you know that's going to be affecting you years down the road right that, mm -hmm. that it's going to need right. some surgical or whatever weird intervention yeah and that's what i want to avoid i've been doing lots of different healing work uh, energy healing, you have to learn to receive mm -hmm. receive so what if i easily receive that's all you have to start saying to yourself out loud or silently every hour for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. And and That's notice, true. even That's though funny. you say, mm-hmm, you're mm -hmm. like, uh-huh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just like me, like, oh, dang, I, I do need someone to come fix that door. I've tried, and I cannot get it level. So yeah. you know what I mean? So, okay? I got it. Okay. Yes. I, I mean, I know that that's what I need to do. It's just. Here's what your guides are saying, and, and I love guides because they just say it better than I do. Um, <laughs> right. 
they, they're that. saying, make it a prayer. Thank you so much, universe, for teaching me to love myself and to let other, others love and cherish and adore me. I'm special, I know. I'm lovely, I know. And thank you so much for my awareness of my magnificence. That's what they're asking you to do. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. Have fun in Florida and the sunshine that. doing it. Thank you. We'll send some sunshine to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very Not much. Not too much sunshine, though. I wish my grass was dormant. What the heck? Well, I you a... said you were going to mow it last week. Why? I did mow the front. Oh, you did? Oh, the front. But then I had a date, so I had to finish and get cleaned up. And, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, I can't do everything. <laughs> I got to, like, fix the hair and put on makeup, right? We want to thank everyone for calling into the show today and Priorities. listening. Priorities. Exactly. <laughs> right, you know, it. exactly. <laughs> Dating's important, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. Vinny knows what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. And we want to thank Suzanne Giesman so much. And, you know, all my girlfriends live vicariously through my dating life, by the way. They love it more than I do, I think. We want to thank Suzanne. And the, the one book that I have in my um, possession, Messages of Hope, the Metaphysical Memoir of a Most Unexpected Medium. We wish everyone joyful blessings. Have a gorgeous day. Bye-bye. The views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of KKNW, its management, or other advertisers. Contests are the responsibility of the hosts of this program and not KKNW. This is Alternative Talk 1150 AM, KKNW Seattle, and KNUC 98.9 HD3 Seattle. And good morning to you. Benny Mathers here for a look at your alternative talk AM 1150 traffic update for around the sound. Starting things off over an I-5 southbound near the on-ramp from State Route 530, uh, mile post 209. There's a recent collision partially blocking the ramp in that area. State Patrol is en route to take care of that situation. Also on I-5 southbound near the on-ramp from 44th Avenue West around mile post 181. Another incident partially blocking the ramp. Medical aid, fire assistance, and State Patrol have also arrived on scene to take care of those motorists. Jury Wright, Missile Defense. I'm Mike Moss. President Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, has issued a new statement aimed at clarifying earlier comments that appeared to leave open the possibility of collusion between members of the Trump 2016 campaign and Russia. This is what he said on CNN last night. I never said there was no collusion between the campaign or between people in the campaign. I have no idea if there, I have not. I said the President of the United States. There is not a single bit of evidence the President of the United States committed the only crime you could commit here, conspired with the Russians to hack the DNC. Giuliani now says he represents only Trump and not the campaign and that there was no collusion by Trump in any way, shape or form. Acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan has unveiled a new space-based missile defense system for the U.S. To our competitors, we see what you are doing 